Hello and welcome to the Valley Art Center's walkthrough of the 51st Annual Juried Art Exhibition. This is the most prestigious annual exhibition, and this year was particularly competitive. With a record-breaking 574 submissions, only 48 works of art were accepted. Comprised of artists within a 250-mile radius of Sugar and Falls, every art medium and style is represented and combined in exciting ways within our patron and Bowen galleries. The exhibition begins at this fabulous Crow No. 1 by Donna Barger. This work was awarded the very first annual Darlene Jackson Award for Watercolor. Just as a crow is an omen for the future, the crow's beak points the viewer into the direction of the rest of the exhibition. The next work is Tony Skinner's brightly colored pastel and prismacolor pencil drawing of rapper Jay-Z. The work is overtly engaging through its tightly cropped larger than life-size depiction, but also because of its direct eye contact with the viewer. The next artist, Judy Hodges, comes all the way from New York. Her acrylic painting, Green Magnolia, uses lively, expressive brush strokes of bright colors and begins an exhibition-wide through line of natural works. Continuing with the natural is taken for a ride by local digital artist, Jessica Waskak. This artwork is an archival print on linen canvas and the image was created with original photography and drawings. While it evokes art historical examples, such as Thomas Cole's Oxbow, the horizontal slender shape of the canvas and its digital creation makes it wholly modern. Ali Gemmer's incredibly detailed drawing blind spot is comprised of white charcoal and chalk pastel on black paper. The viewer can explore its fine strokes, which in some areas are only the width of a strand of hair. Further down the patron gallery is Alan and Busby's watercolor painting, or boat number one, which shows a familiar skyline of Cleveland, representing the Terminal Tower and Federal Court building. We see an ore boat under the lift bridge and the impressions of the rippling water it displaces. The next work of art is A Witch's Garden by local art educator Christine Blaschke. This organic entanglement of leaves and flowers is achieved through small dots in a process called stippling. Ren Clark's Nameless Things is a composite photograph on metal. The vibrant greens pop from a dark background in the same way as Emma Gitzolis's photograph Cheers, created at the beginning of the pandemic. It uses two white teacups on its black background, fear freezing the moment of spilling liquids. Intertwine by William Buther is also frozen in time, or perhaps left behind by time. A broken down Ferris wheel is seemingly reclaimed by nature. Its composition juxtaposes round and straight lines of man-made and natural forms. A very different photographic depiction is seen in Spiderwort by Mary Defer. This digital scan of unfixed lumen on archival paper was awarded an honorable mention. Bill Fleming's John Lewis, Good Trouble Number no. 2, is a vibrant acrylic monoprint painting combined with relief print, showing a contemplative side of the late representative and civil rights activist. The next work is Those Pink Planters, a richly colored and detailed oil painting on canvas by Tom Jackson. The final work in the patron gallery is Fallon Hartleaf's screen print, Lemonade, a poppy mix of geometric and organic shapes. Entering the Bowen Gallery, what is immediately obvious is the variation of themes, mediums, and styles for the rest of the exhibition. Sharing the Journey Quintessence by John A. Sargent III is a large-scale painting created with rust-oleum, latex, and oil on a five-foot wide canvas. Silence by Deborah Butler is a graphite and colored pencil drawing, mixing the black and white flesh with the colors of the flowers. This work was awarded the Marionac Award for drawing. Rima Tessman's Petrichor is a gorgeous natural abstraction, while Julie Martin's acrylic painting reflection segments both form and composition. 
I mowed, it rained, it cleared, Puddle on Concrete by Joseph Risner, Ops for Naturalism. It's an acrylic painting that you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a photograph from a distance. It was awarded best in show. Under Siege by PJ Lytle is a mix of acrylic, oil, and collage. The artist segments the work into blue and yellow, evoking the Ukrainian flag as a seated figure personifies those affected by the current war. Not Your Average Paper Towels by Paula Dam is a playful textile of sorts made from cut, spun, and woven kozo paper. A Love Letter to a Ghost from Keegan Adams is a litho and woodcut print. It was created as a memorial for a friend who passed away from complications from AIDS in 1995. Ken Hetzel created this amazing sculpture out of wood, nest, and stone. Nest or sacrifice began years ago when the wood included in the work was struck by lightning to achieve its splintered shape. Two Rivers by Drew King is a very modern acrylic painting. The composition is abstract, but the viewer is able to create a narrative of the figure in its careful, colorful environment. The next section of the Bowen Gallery celebrates a combination of 2D and 3D artworks. Colony from Toledo artist John Kinney is an exciting sculpture made from baseballs and deck screws. Homesteaders by Elizabeth Prindle is a mixed media containing objects such as a vintage photograph and a wooden shoe stretcher. While the objects may not seem overtly related, the title gives hint to their connection in a larger story. Will Wilson's The Forest is a bright composition with a similar subject matter as Johnny Sargent III's Sharing the Journey. It's created with acrylic and house paint. Double Ended by Molly Davis is a sleek combination of metallic and concrete elements in the form of a floor sculpture. Textile artist Megan Smith's Hardinger Fjord 1 was handwoven with hand dyed painted warp, cotton, synthetic thread, and wool while in Norway. Allure by Chris Benavides is a lifelike oiled portrait on gesso board. It's been paired with Christina Malcolm's orchid ring, created with sterling silver and chalcedony. Destined to be Queen by Kim Barnes is a hopeful mixed media portrait. The colored pencil, fabric, and gems create layers of regality in the young woman's face. Folklore by Gwen Waite is a found object assemblage made of commonly found objects such as mirrors, along with ceramic figure. Colfax Blues is a digital photo on metallic plate print by David Dingwall. Once Upon a Time by Jan Derringer is an encaustic photo with shellac burn and oil paint on cradle board. It depicts the artist's mother. Time Lapse by Molly Johnson is a wood kiln fire and stoneware. While Enamel Paper Fan by Emily Joyce is created with enamel, brass, sterling silver, and copper. Mad About Monk Two is an acrylic by George Kokar. It was painted at the beginning of the pandemic, just as Monk painted about anxiety and fear and other psychological concerns in his era. Artist Drew Ippoli won first place for a fugitive from the law of averages, a mid-fire ceramic with slits and underglazes on stoneware. Mathematician series Dee Dee Kin by David Kunstman won the Phyllis Lloyd Memorial in abstract painting. Tale of the White Raven by Michael W. High is a dreamlike composition. Its meaning of abstract and figural elements with the subject matter of animals is frequently found in the artist's work. Out of My Window by Dennis Mastrangelo 
is an intricately cut paper collage. Andaman Owls by Nancy Roy depicts three Andaman barn owls and was created from stoneware clay and enhanced with underglazes and iron oxide. Flesh Vinyl by Violet Mayberg is a mixed media sculpture made from a silicone recreation of the artist's face, human hair, and a record player. In the words of the artist, sometimes the sound of someone's voice or a message is music to one's ears. Valley Art Center instructor and artist Barbara Martin's blue-footed booby is a joyful scratch board with collage in a vintage frame. That's the way Punch and Judy, wrong since 1662, is a pair of figures made from porcelain, glaze, and gold inserts from artist Kimberly Chapman. It speaks to the strange normalization of violence towards women in childhood messaging. Day and Night Vision from Lisa Schoenberg is a monoprint diptych showing natural and man-made found objects. This walnut table was created by Madeline Davis. Titled Suffer and Gather, The Bread Altar, this table was created as a part of a performance where the artist would present bread to the participants who would then be told to take what they need after the artist led the group in a non-denominational prayer. <laughs> 